Come Rays continue to win ball games. No matter if it's 11 to 0 or 1 to 0, they keep doing it. Let's talk about it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Race podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure you check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays, as well as all the other podcast platforms. We are also on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And you can email us anytime. We do have mailbag episodes afoot. So Locked On Rays at gmail.com to send in those questions and or voice memos. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. So go to HelloFresh.com slash MLB60 and use code MLB60, MLB60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Well, Ulysses, like you mentioned in the open there, the Rays have won games 11 to nothing, 9 to 4. I mean, they've uh definitely put the gas on the offense, but this time they had to win a ball game in a different fashion, a different style, and they did just that downing the Boston Red Sox in game 1 of a four-game series, 1 to 0, the old pitcher's duel. And this was the closest match, not only score-wise, but uh, anxiety-wise, stress-wise, uh, to watch as a race fan. Man, that that Poche inning. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God uh, our, our, our buddy uh, Colin got, got through it. But, no, that was an exciting game. And it starts with the pitching. It has to. I mean, great job by both lefties, uh, Beeks and, and Fleming, setting the tone you needed to. Um, you know, you looked at the Nick Pavetta numbers against the Rays uh, in 2022, and the slash line was impressive. Like, you know, oh, you're like, oh, they can hit Pavetta the heck out of the ball. But this is why the numbers might lie to you. If you watched Pavetta pitch against the Rays, you also remember him having a no-hit bid through five. So that's why when you just look at the numbers, oh, they're hitting 26 with an 800-something OPS. Like, oh, th this is going to be easy. Like, no, but did you watch the game? That all unfolded after the fifth, sixth inning uh, right. when he was tired already. So uh, you 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 have to have some sort of uh, flavor for the game, some taste for the game. And and so I, I wasn't so confident on, on, on the race lineup with Nick Pavetta. And he showed up, man. Uh, th their guy also wants to win, but that's why Beeks and Fleming keeping that score at zero was so paramount, and they did. You got, you gotta, you gotta give up. Uh, the, you gotta give them credit, Beeks and, and and Fleming. Yeah, and I wonder if the Rays will continue with that approach as Tyler Glass now continues to be out of the fold of. You allow Beeks to be the opener, which I like the beard that he has going on, giving yeah. the old intimidating Dallas Keiko look and then Fleming off of that, which that's a nice bounce back confidence builder for him going forward. And then again, like you mentioned uh, on yesterday's show, just, Hey, run lefties up against the Red Sox when you can Beeks, Fleming, Clevenger, Poche. That didn't quite uh, work out uh, as planned with the bases loaded. And then uh, he eventually knocks down uh Rafael Devers, who Devers is 0 for 8 in his career against Colin yeah. Poche, believe it or not. And then Pete Fairbanks gets the Rays very first save of the year, 10 games in, if you can believe it. But yeah, um, in a game that is one nothing, you, of course, have to have terrific pitching, but you also have to have good defense behind you. And we saw that on both sides, definitely on the Red Sox side with Rob Ref Snyder. I don't know what the catch probability percentage of that play was, but that's a, a play that would be hard for Jose Siri or Kevin Kiermeyer to make. And for him to rear back ball was way over his head. And he goes to the deepest part of the ballpark and basically a, a backward slide uh, to make that catch was amazing and, and really could have been a momentum and game changer for the Red yeah. Sox. If they had put a run on the board, which Rev Snyder, 
former Ray, by the way, uh, I looked this up. I cannot believe it. He has been kicking around in the league since 2015. Eight-year veteran. He could have his pension relatively soon. I don't know if he has like 300, 400 career at-bats yet, but he is he is making a roster by hook or by crook, it seems. It, I would have never, when he was with the Rays, I would have never said, oh, in 2023, he will be the, the Red Sox starting outfielder, uh, center yeah. fielder. Like I would have never guessed that. It's it's There are some guys that just uh just make the roster they're they're just a 26 man and and they will in this case hey being a starter it's not being the 26 man but you know just like we talked about during our fantasy uh league taylor modder has a major league job taylor modder at least at, at the beginning in the opening day roster he did i don't know if he's been sent down but yeah those names that you're like how is this still a name in the big leagues good for them but yeah re that ref snyder play was was incredible and it could have been a game changer for the race i believe that we uh the race had men on first and second right or second and third no i think first and second um so it it, it could have been a really yeah game changing play and and you know you keep the game at bay but i, I want to go back to what you said in the beginning you you know with glass now out will they keep employing this this opener for fleming i beg them to I beg them to yeah. just put your players in a position to succeed. I think a race fandom is okay with not seeing Josh Fleming be a starter. I think if you want to really utilize him properly, you use him as a bulk guy. I mean, that, that's, that's okay. You, so, that is okay. That not is everybody fine. can be a starter. Not everybody can be Tyler Glass now. Not everybody can be Shane McClanahan. There's different roles for different guys. Not everybody can yes. be a closer, ninth inning. Some sometimes guys are most comfortable in that that middle inning leverage role, and yeah. it's about finding that sweet spot for Josh Fleming. I feel like the Rays have kicked the tires on. Let's try to make him a starter. And thus far, I mean, maybe you know, a year or two from now, maybe that that will be. Uh, in his future but as of right now that's that doesn't seem to be the role for him no it doesn't and 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 that's okay uh like you said there's a role for everybody i do want to say jalen beaks man his, his change up was at 90 miles an hour and uh andy was saying how his, his change up uh beaks change up was the same velocity as fleming's fastball yeah that was pretty cool uh so i know you're a beaks guy and you've wanted to say, hey, well, how about making Beeks a starter? I wouldn't be. Op I've been opposed to it because we saw him and we I did not like the results. But we haven't seen him be stretched out uh, since him doing some changes and coming yeah. back from Tommy John. I would still rather just keep him where he's succeeding uh, in the two inning role. Uh, but he did he did flash some really good stuff yesterday. He really did. Right. And quite frankly, I mean, with the Rays having four other legit starters that are going six, seven innings at a clip, it's not like you can afford to have that fifth day of Jalen Beeks giving you a couple, Josh Fleming giving you a couple, piecing yes. it together. The bullpen's not getting enough work as it is. So you got to exactly. find an opportunity for them. I mean, Pete Fairbanks is, you know, over there twiddling his thumbs. Uh, so I, I'm cool with that situation now. Maybe things change if and when there's more pitching injuries that come down the pipeline but i think that for now that's that's a really good approach i i do like jalen beaks i like what he has to offer um there were times in in that game where uh he gave up some loud contact made uh yeah. made randy rosarena work but at the end of the day yeah. and, and outs and out too so uh yeah. there's a couple other notes on this game that we'll get to but first we have to tell you about our new sponsor called so rare so Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards, win or lose. You still own your cards, and there's no cost to play. So head over to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's spelled SoRare, S-O-R-A-R-E.com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start 
competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on L O C K E D O N to start playing today. All right. We almost buried the lead there. We didn't even mention how the Rays scored their one and only run the, the only run of that ball game. If I may add a two hour, six minute affair. Love that. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Lau solo home run. Does he have, Homers in back to back to back games now. I think so. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right? Yeah. If I'm, if I'm, yeah, I think so. I think so. And it's three shutouts in in a row as well. 11 0, 11 0, 1 0. Everything is working perfectly. But yeah, let's, let's focus on, on Bilal a little bit. Um, the dog did it, man. I mean, he, that, that at bat, it was 10, it was a 10 pitch at bat and he was 0 and 2 after two pitches. So he hung in there, man. Yeah, he hung in there. Um, it was it was a really cool at bat to see, uh, just like he said on Sunday about Harold's play. Like, hey, you you want to know how to play baseball? Watch Harold play. If you want to if you want to see a good at bat, <laughs> go back and and on film room on on MLB and and watch it. That right. it was a work of art. And you know the the pop that he has when he's healthy. It's so good to see Brendan Lau healthy and. I think we got a comment on YouTube. I'm not going to remember the name. So whoever said that and you, you're you watching this, I'm sorry I'm putting you out there, but I'm not fully putting you out there. Um, hey, should we be worried about Brandon Lau? And I think it was like game six. Like He has done enough in his MLB career to know he's going to pop off. Right. We got to stop this propaganda that – Brandon Lau is not going to pop off. Oh, is he going to, is the bubble going to burst? I, 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 you know, it's, it's not, it's fine. Everybody can have a bad six, seven games. It's going to happen. Um, but ultimately the line's going to be there. Yeah. And he has in previous year, it's been a slow starter as well, but it's just good to see him and other rays. It seems to be a theme thus far. You have middle up fastballs, fastballs up in the zone, and they're yeah. ducking, getting underneath, lifting it and depositing it out of the field. So um, it just seems like, man, they're really turning and being able to get out in front of those fastballs that are top of the zone. That that's kind of been all the rage throughout baseball is, Hey, you got to pitch to the top of the zone, got to pitch to the top of the zone. And it seems like the race have some sort of approach to counteract that. The other thing too, uh, Brandon Lau, uh, batting, what was it? Second in this game, uh, in the lineup. Yes. Yes. And yes. wander batting fourth. Have we seen that this year? I, I don't, I got to be honest. I don't watch or focus on uh, Topkins lineup tweets each and every day, but it did pique my interest that Wander was batting cleanup because uh, we've pretty much been saying and in, in notating that, hey, he's he's going to be your your number two guy in the lineup. But with his I think uh, power, I think he, I think he did it once. coming through. You know, yeah, I think I think it, this wasn't the first time. I think he did it once before. But hey, look again. We talked about the barrel percentage yesterday. How it's insane from four point six nine, four point six six, and now it's at over twenty percent. Um, yes, I don't think he'll be a thirty homer guy this year, but I do think that he is showing that, like you said, with the launch angle plus the barrel per percentage. And this, the, the, he could have a 2025 home run season this year. Yeah. And depending on the baseballs that are being thrown out there, if they're the Aaron Judge uh, rubber balls, hey, then you can put some damage on the on the home run totals too. Uh, he could be a 30-35 home run when he comes into his body. He doesn't need to, like you said yeah. yesterday. He doesn't need to. And you're completely uh, uh, right about that. But he could. Like Ronald Acuna doesn't have to be a 40-40 guy. But he could like right. it's it's it would be pretty intense. But no good eye there putting Wander uh, uh, in the fourth spot. You got to keep those guys together. Uh, Yandi, Randy, Bilal, and 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 Wander. They're your best bats. So yeah. when you put them all in the top four, you're gonna create some havoc on the bases. Uh, which it was nice to see Randy. Let's 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 spread the love here. Randy uh, going to uh, going to second, getting his steal. I think he's two for two. No caught steal. Hey, there yet. we go. Well, with there the bigger bases and the rules changes, you would think that. I mean, we've seen it throughout baseball. The success rate on yeah. base stealers is extremely high. It's like got to be upwards of 75, 80 percent thus far. 
it's it's such a different brand of baseball of of what we've seen for the last ten years, and yeah, and it's much needed too. I mean, when you have, uh, I mean, th these rules changes are probably about five, ten, twelve years too late, but at least they've come through. And yes. now a ball game instead of, hey, even in a one nothing game like this, it still moves smoothly and you have action throughout, and that's the big thing is where you don't want to have to. I mean, even last year it was like there'd be times where okay uh i'm just gonna scroll on my phone for a minute until the next pitch comes through there's none it, of that anymore hey there's yeah. there's time there's clocks in in uh in basketball in football why not add it to baseball and and, and you know I, I know the traditionalists are like having a, a, a rage fit right now i'm sorry the sport is never for the older persons and, and when we Kevin and I, who are in our yeah. in our young thirties, when we become, you know, the 60, 70 year olds, which hopefully we will, and we we get to live old, old, you know, till old age, whatever we think about the sport, I'm sorry, the sport is no longer for us. Yeah, it isn't. It's for the younger generation. It's for the grandkids. It's for the kids. Like that's what it is. And 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 so, so I I don't I don't get that mentality of like oh it has to be kept like in the 1800s when there were the New York Gothams like what yeah. by the way did you know that there was a team called the New York Gothams I did not know that but they should definitely bring that back that I would know. be a fun fun moniker to have you can do like like the city connect I know the Yankees are not this cool but if I were you know in the Yankees marketing team I'm like yeah we're bringing the Gothams back yeah we're doing some sort of do Batman thing yeah yeah that would be so cool no, that'd be um really cool. No, no, yeah. no. Uh, it, it's been it's been great to see, and you finally get your your nail biting save there with Pete Fairbanks, dude. He is just on fire. A couple little grounders. Did you get nervous when you saw him for the last out? Like, still go to first, and like it was already covered, and he still was in the trajectory of the ball. I was like, dude, yeah, like, chill. <laughs> well, any any time a pitcher is running to cover first, you have to hold your breath to yeah. some extent because. Uh, we've seen some wacky, wild, wooly pitching injuries. I mean, pitchers get hurt taking their shirt off. So, yeah. um, so it's, it's not too out of the realm of possibility that they roll their ankle or, uh, they, they do something with their, their foot or their leg trying to get to the bag or they have a weird collision. So that is definitely something that you have to pay attention to. Yeah, no, no, but it was, it was a fantastic game, uh, overall, you're going to have pitchers duels. You're not going to win everything 11 to zero, like, like B Lau said. So this was good to see. And by the way, we reached the 10, we reached the 10 in a row uh, again, rejoice. Uh, and, 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 and you won the most difficult game, uh, in, in, in on paper yeah. because you don't have any of your horses. So now it's going to be McClanahan tonight on Tuesday. Then you get, uh, is it Eflin and then Springs or Springs and then Eflin? I believe it's Eflin and then Springs. Okay, yeah, I think so. Eflin and Springs. So you, you won the most difficult game. So if you can take three uh, out of four, it's 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 been a beautiful start. Uh, and, and I think we would all take that. Yeah. And uh, we'll discuss a little bit of that uh, matchup between Garrett Whitlock and Shane McClanahan. But first, Ulysses, we have to tell the audience about something very important. Yes, yes, we do. And why wouldn't we tell you about FanDuel? Because FanDuel, no matter if it's a Grand Slam, if it's a no-hitter, or double plays, hey, guess what? They're all back. And steals, too. And mm -hmm. there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat no first bet up to $1,000. You heard me right, $1,000. Dollars, so you just have to go to fanduel.com slash locked on l o c k e d o n, sign up, place your first bet, and get up to one thousand dollars back in bonus in bonus bets if you don't win. So do not miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join Fanduel today. Imagine if you had put uh, some kind of cheese on on the Rays. Just keeping on winning and keeping yeah. on winning. That would be really, really smart. Uh, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Again, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. 
Okay, so tonight it's Garrett Whitlock going up against Shane McClanahan. Garrett Whitlock will be making his first appearance of the year. He's yet to pitch in 2023. Of course, uh, he's been one of the um, bright spots for the Red Sox over the last couple of years. A guy who gets tons of extension, doesn't uh, walk a lot of guys, uh, mainly sinker, then mixes in the changeup in the slider, just a solid all-around uh, pitcher. But Shane McClanahan will be making his third start, third appearance of the year. And if I had FanDuel up and loaded in front of me, I'd probably, you know, pencil in. Yeah, Shane McClanahan, I would fully expect uh, at least six innings and at least six strikeouts. Yeah, and I know that uh, he kind of struggled last time out with, with a Nationals team. Uh, you're going to have those, but he, he persevered and he got the W and th that tells you a lot about his mindset right now. Uh, we talked about lefties would be the type of pitcher that would give the best hitters right now for the Red Sox, the most fits. We saw that with how they employed the, their bullpen beaks, Fleming, uh, Clevenger, Poche. So now you're, you're, you're telling you're, you're giving your top of the, uh, of the rotation arm who was in Cy Young conversation, who is a lefty uh, on the mound today. I feel pretty good. I, I think if you can get it six from Shane, like quality start, six innings, two earned runs, that would be fantastic. I, I really would not like to see that third run come in uh, just because I'm selfish that way and want to <laughs> see the the six and two. But that, that would be great. Uh, hopefully that's what we see today because, uh, man, I know this team is going, look, people, they're going to lose. But because it hasn't happened yet, you just want to extend and and fully ride this wave. I, I mean, can it just last a little bit longer, Kevin? I really now now I'm being I know I'm being greedy. I want the number eleven. I really do. I want that Brewers record, thirteen and zero. I know, I know that would be, and it would just be so nice to just like shut up those talking heads on on Twitter and on Sports Center and all that stuff. Like, oh, they're not doing their against competition. Okay. If you're if you're thinking that this is easy, first of all, I, if you're a Yankee fan, I, I I better see a plus 58 run differential when you meet the Oakland A's, the yeah. Red Sox and the Washington Nationals and the Detroit Tigers. Oh, you didn't sweep all of them. Oh, I, I guess you can't even beat real teams like you said that the race weren't playing. It's just I know and I right. shouldn't get worked up about what somebody in an anime profile picture on Twitter says. And yet. Yes. And yet. That's why you got to stay away from the anti-social media. I do. I know. It's a virus. It's a, it's virus, a virus out there. It's, it's like fun you said. for, you yeah. know, kind of bantering about little baseball things. But when yeah. people uh, think they're, you know, smarter than Einstein on there and have the best quips <laughs> and, and one-liners, it's like, okay, uh, find something better to do with your time. Uh, so yesterday's game was yeah. one to nothing. The Rays have traditionally so far this year put a lot of runs on the board uh, with this pitching matchup and with the roster construction of both of these teams over under five and a half runs combined tonight. I'd say under under. So another pitchers duel esque affair. Yeah. I, I don't see this being a, a f more than a four to one score. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hopefully, you know, Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, as long as I don't care about being right uh, on this, if the Rays win, <laughs> yeah. like if they if they win it and they blow them out of the water, fine. But I, for the pitching matchup, I I, I don't know. I I feel like this is a step up team of of the Oakland A's and and the Tigers and the Nationals. So I I don't think you're gonna see uh, blowouts right now. And again, obviously, I I don't expect McClanahan to get hit around. Um, even though even though. If somebody's gonna hit him, hit him around would be a, a, a divisional foe. You know they've yeah. seen McClanahan plenty of times in, in in the playoffs too. And hey, do we not remember what happened when McClanahan came in relief in in Game Four of the ALDS in 2021? Yeah, of course we do, and we have nightmares and and yeah. cold sweats about it still. So um, hopefully that's not what happens, and and he comes out fresh like he did in Game One of that same ALDS. A couple other things. Um, I know we've mentioned Garrett Clevenger on this episode, and I don't want to take credit for it. I think that uh, Andy and Neil might have mentioned it on the radio uh, yesterday, but 
He has a similar look. The old, we haven't done a doppelganger lookalike competition lately. But yeah. Jake McGee, Garrett Clevenger, Jake McGee comps. It seems like they've got the very same exact body type and facial structure. Um, so, and they're both lefties. I think it's, that's a pretty good one. Unreal. You're not giving me the credit for the Jake McGee comp, even though I've been oh. saying this since he was, you serious? Really? I might, <laughs> might have been selectively listening. I Everybody put yeah. it down in the comments on YouTube. If, if you heard me say that Clevenger is the next Jake McGee, please. And thank you. But did you? Not in terms of like what? Type no, of not in terms of like people. obviously in terms of of the pitching okay. repertoire, but like I'm talking about like is, local, actual looks. I'm pretty sure, and I'm gonna have to 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 see if I can scrounge up this tweet. I don't know how to look up past tweets, so I'll have to just boom, guess, boomer my way out of it. McGee Clevenger and see what pops up on your end. I'm pretty sure I said McGee uh, uh, Clevenger is the McGee doppel doppelganger. Uh, yeah, mm. pretty sure I did okay. say that. I'm going to well, try to find it, and if I try to, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys tomorrow on tomorrow's episode. How about that? There we go. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, Ulysses still has the sunglasses going, has the Ray Charles look. He's blocking out the haters. Uh, update, how long will you be going with the sunglass approach? Uh, I think you don't mess with a winning streak right now, so yeah. the sunglasses will have to stay uh, as long as they have to, Kevin, uh, as long as they have to. And that's all I'll say about this inside baseball. That's fair. Is it hard to look at the computer screen when you're doing the live reads or does it make it easier or it's different? It's 100 percent a struggle. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I as you know, I am actually very uh, not blind, but it's it's I need glasses. So. Right. Uh, putting sunglasses with a prescription and then, you know, you move one way or the other and it, there's glare. So it's it's a it's a little bit of a toughy game. But you know what? Hey, I'm, I'm pulling through. It's like I'm Shane McClanahan against the Nationals. I don't have my best stuff right now, but I'm I'm giving it my all and, and, and it, it seems to be succeeding. Yeah, we might need to get a uh, sunglass sponsor advertiser on the show. Would be let's nice. go rep it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do it. Go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, very good. Um, thank you for making the Locked on Rays podcast your very first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on Fantasy Baseball podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Let's go for 11. Let's go.